By the authority given on the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Well, good afternoon. Distinguished guests, we're delighted to welcome Councillor Anne, the Lord Mayor of Birmingham, who has found time in her schedule to be with us, even though I'm a bit grumpy that she upstages me in her gown. And it's also a great pleasure to welcome our two honorary graduates, Julie Bailey of Farside and Kimberly Motley, who has come all the way from North Carolina to be with us today. So first of all, we've got something very important to do, and that is practice the applause. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but this morning's ceremony, they raised the roof. So we're gonna make sure that we are able to beat them at least by a couple of decibels. So in order to give you some encouragement, I'd like everyone who can to stand who is receiving a degree this afternoon, and we should give them the first of many rounds of applause this afternoon. So just stand, if you can stand. That's not bad, I'll give you about an eight or a nine, but we're gonna practice again later, because I don't for one minute, despite the grand location and this beautiful surroundings, despite the incredible inspiration that you are as our graduates to all of us, this should not be a solemn occasion, it should be one of celebration. So I want maximum numbers of whooping and cheering. Please don't hold back, this is your ceremony, this is all of your support network ceremony too. So please don't for one minute think that this has to be serious, it should be light and jolly and an afternoon of fun and laughter. And if this morning is anything to go by, probably a few tears as well. There's another thing you can do to show uh, how you're feeling about the ceremony this afternoon. We really encourage you to take photos, to tweet them, put them on Facebook, wherever you like to share stuff with your friends and your family. And we've been using the hashtag OU underscore ceremonies. OU underscore ceremonies. So please do that because then you can see some of the other incredible people that are here today and your friends and family can catch up with what's been going on. So I'm just going to run through the order of the ceremony. We're going to start with the honorary um, doctor, degree of Doctor of the University um, giving to Julie Bailey. Um, and that's going to be given by Dr. Verena White, Senior Lecturer in Professional Healthcare Education in the Faculty of Wellbeing, Education and Language Studies. And they'll sign the book and then Ms. Julie Bailey will give her address to you. And then we'll see the presentation by me of those graduates who've gained higher degrees and first degrees of Bachelors of Arts, Bachelors of Engineering and Bachelor of the Law, and they've been able to come here today. They'll be presented by Nicholas McCarty, Director of Operations, Student Recruitment, Fees and Academic Services. Probably a man you know well. Then we'll award the second of our honorary degrees to um, university, to, sort of the university to attorney Kimberly Motley, and Mr. Paul Catley, head of the law school and the Faculty of Business and Law, will present that award, and Kimberly will give us her address afterwards. And then we'll finish, last but no means least, the graduates who have gained a Bachelor of Science degree, Foundation degree, or Diploma of Higher Education, and that have been able to come here today. And then, to conclude the ceremony, I'll give a short address to all of you. But as I say, this is a day of celebration. You should be immensely proud that you, as graduates, are part of 20,000 people that will graduate from the Open University just this year. And we're so happy you could make it and that we could show our admiration for what you've achieved with your degree. So without further ado, let's get on with the ceremony. Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests. Julie Bailey is a campaigner and activist 
whose work to expose shortcomings in the NHS has helped transform attitudes to public safety and patient care in healthcare. In September 2007, Julie's mother Bella was admitted to Staffield Hospital with a hernia. Julie and her family expected that Bella would be treated with kindness and respect, receiving warm and supportive care. Instead, she witnessed staff shortages, chaotic wards and dangerous practices. Bella, who suffered from breathing difficulties, was left without oxygen as there were no nurses on hand to connect the equipment. As a result, Julie and her family refused to leave Bella's side. Tragically, however, Bella died. Julie had immediately alerted hospital staff to her concerns about patient safety, but they were dismissed out of hand. She took her complaints to senior members of the hospital, her MP and the local council, all to no avail. Finally, Julie wrote to the local newspaper. She was then inundated with letters from other grieving families who had experienced the same conditions and shared the same concerns. They shared stories of beloved relatives treated callously instead of with compassion. As a result, Julie decided to set up Cure the NHS to expose the hospital's failings. One of their first acts was to write to the Healthcare Commission, now the Quality Care Commission, detailing their experiences. The Commission was already concerned about high mortality rates at the hospital and began to investigate. They found what they described as an appalling standard of care, prompting a series of further inquiries. The first Francis inquiry report into hospital standards concluded that managers were more concerned with hitting targets and cutting costs than with their patients. In the light of some excellent practice at many hospitals, these reports exposed a culture at this hospital which shocked the nation. Julie and her fellow companions at Cure the NHS continued to press for a full public inquiry which would focus on the broad failures of leadership, regulation and systems. Eventually, after several years of determined persistence, this was granted. In 2013, the second Francis Inquiry report was published, highlighting widespread failures, not just at this hospital, but at many levels of the NHS. This has been instrumental in reshaping NHS culture, prioritising patient care, ensuring accountability and tackling complacency, and has contributed to the education of new healthcare professionals nationwide. Cure the NHS continues its vital campaign to improve patient safety and care and change the culture of the NHS. Julie herself was named a game changer by BBC Radio 4's Woman's Hour and she was awarded the CBE for services to older people. Robert Francis wrote in his report that the truth was uncovered mainly because of the com persistent complaints made by a determined group of patients and those close to them. And in the House of Commons, the then Prime Minister, David Cameron, paid tribute to Julie Bailey and to Cure the NHS for their incredible courage and tireless campaigning. Today, the Open University also honours Julie's extraordinary resilience, bravery and strength in continuing to press for answers and to pursue justice. Everyone who uses the NHS owes her a debt of gratitude. Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Julie Bailey.
Thank you. It's a huge privilege to accept this honorary degree and an honour to accept it and be amongst you today. I had no idea I would still be here trying to cure the NHS, but sadly I am. And I had no idea 10 years ago what a difficult journey it would be to uncover one of the deep, biggest disasters in the history of the NHS. My mum was 86 years old. She wasn't a well woman, but she shouldn't have suffered and died the way she did. Sitting for eight weeks and watching her and others suffer and not being able to do anything about it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. The ward was chaotic and out of control. And I had no idea that somewhere I believed would be so safe was in fact such a dangerous place. The first report into the hospital told us that there was no system of safety in place for the patients or for the staff. Really, the staff didn't stand a chance. There was just too few of them to help the patients. One of the consultants at the hospital told one of the reports that the staff had become immune to the sound of pain. Vital machines were turned off as the staff didn't know how to use them. Those who tried to speak out inside the hospital were silenced. I thought I would just say what I'd seen and something would be done about it. The battle we had to be heard just should never have happened. Many of the people who suffered were older people and this didn't help. Something's gone wrong in our society. We don't value older people the way we should, and value their experiences and give them the respect that they deserve. Instead, we call them bed blockers and see them as a drain on our resources. We forget we're only here because of them. Today, I'm still here trying to cure the NHS. We still harm too many and spend too much of our public money on errors that the system should now have learned from. I can stand here today though and tell you there's a lot more people trying to make the NHS safer than there was 10 years ago. Other industries like the nuclear and the construction industry have had similar disasters and they've learned where now safety is their priority. This gives me hope for the NHS. And with the right leadership, I believe we can too. The NHS does some wonderful things, pioneering surgery, for instance, but we've got to get the basics right. I believe that journey started. Gone is the day where the NHS had forgotten what it was there for. It had lost its way and forgot it was there for the patients. It was hitting targets, but missing the point. I only helped remind people that it was there for patients. Mid-staffs is a reminder when we forget what the NHS is for. We now have better regulation and the journey's begun for change for the better. It's those working in the NHS now that have got all the work to do. You in this room are all future leaders. Don't let every, anyone silence you, believe in yourselves. I hope you will have the courage to speak up for those who are unable to speak up for themselves, if ever you have to. That way, you'll be able to sleep at night as I do as I know I did the right thing. And it's days like today that remind me that I did do the right thing. Thank you.
Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled Skills for Creativity in Graphic Design, Testing the Relationship Between Visualization, Written Comprehension, and Graphic Design Creativity, Carl Jeffries. For the degree of Master of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled Optimizing the Loading Diversity of Rail Passenger Crowding Using Onboard Occupancy Data, Simon David Ball. I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Childhood and Youth, Liz Mead. For the degree of Master of Arts in Classical Studies, I present Philippa Davy. For the degree of Master of Arts in Education, Leadership and Management, I present Laura Scott. For the degree of Master of Arts in English, I present Joanne Hopley. Carol Kennedy. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Rupert Smith. For the degree of Master of Education, I present Susan Oxlade. For the degree of Master of Science in Advanced Networking, I present Ron Austin. John Herbert. Prithi Rana. For the degree of Master of Science in Advancing Healthcare Practice, I present Jane Alalawi. <laughs> Kelly Kuzinski. Comfort Modwehe. For the degree of Master of Science in Engineering, I present Keith Dickon. For the degree of Master of Science in Medicinal Chemistry with Distinction, I present Claire Jackson. Rav Kao Mandir. For the degree of Master of Science in Systems Thinking in Practice, I present David Rowlands. For the degree of Master of Science in Technology Management, I present Tim East. Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering and Bachelor of Laws degrees and have been able to attend here today. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with First Class Honours, Abby Ashley.
Gloria Balbi. <laughs> Helen Bartlett. <laughs> Ken Clayton. Paul Conway. James Croton. Pamela Devine. Hannah Eccles. Deborah Ellery. Jackie Forrester. Paul Hand. Kimberly Heritage. Felicity Herneman. <laughs> Cara Howard. <laughs> Bethany Hughes. <laughs> Jacqueline Holland. Jenny Inskip. Andrew Johnson. Andrew Jones. Catherine Jones. Philip Knight. <laughs> Robert Laker. <laughs> Barbara Lees. Zoe Lundgren. <laughs> Jacob Moore. <laughs> Claire Oakley. <laughs> Joanne Altred. Madalina Padran Sujik. <laughs> Beth Shepherd. <laughs> Soledad Suracha. <laughs> Jane Warner. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, I present Robert Adams. <laughs> Olufu Lakayemi Adeideri. <laughs> Shona Arman. Nusrat Ashfaq. <laughs> mm. 
Lindsay Atkins. Rami Ojlebets. Kerry Bancroft Martin. Anne Barber. Lauren Barnes. Robert Barnett. Charlie Bartlett. Lynn Beasley. Stacey Belcher. Carrie Ann Benson. <laughs> Stephanie Bethel. <laughs> Leonora Bowden. <laughs> Graham Bright. Hilary Bradford. Yeah. Daniel Brooks. Yeah. Martina Bruckner. Yeah. Janet Bryan. Stephen Bullock. <laughs> Jennifer Buswell. <laughs> Robert Carlo. <laughs> Fiona Carstairs. Ashley Chambers. <laughs> Julie Chilton. <laughs> Vicky Coleman. <laughs> Richard Copley. Alison Caulfield. <laughs> Jennifer Coulson. <laughs> Kelly Dale. <laughs> Gareth Davies. Natalie Dewhurst. <laughs> Alison Dolman. <laughs> Eldiko Dachton. <laughs> Alison Easingwood. Stacey Ely. <laughs> Peter Elleray. <laughs> Kirsty Margaret Evans. <laughs> Vicky Evans.
Louise Fenimore. Catherine Field. <laughs> Helen Fisher. <laughs> Adrienne Fitzpatrick. Rachel Forder. <laughs> Suzanne Fossey. <laughs> Josephine Fradley. <laughs> Lindsay Gig. Caitlin Goldsworthy. <laughs> Blanca Gonzalez Tarrio. <laughs> Maria Gorman. <laughs> Rachel Hales. David Handley. <laughs> Simon Harris. <laughs> Michelle Harris. <laughs> Janet Hayes. Gillian Hayhurst. <laughs> Rebecca Head. <laughs> Robert Hermitage. Victoria Hill. <laughs> Benjamin Hilton. <laughs> Megan Hall. <laughs> Sam Hodge. Sarah Holmes. <laughs> Kathleen Hunter. <laughs> Chris Johnson. <laughs> Adam Jones. Liana Jones. Nathan Keane. Susan Keats. David Kirby. Stephen Lee. <laughs> Dawn Linnard. <laughs> Sadie Lloyd. <laughs> Beverly Lloyd Roberts. Adam Longley. <laughs> Ma
Mary Kate Love. Kane Mangum. <laughs> Jane McConaughey. Danielle McGrath. Jack McAnulty. Corinne McAfee. Rebecca Molyneux. Rebecca Malloy. Michaela Morgan. Prabjot Multani. Louise Newbit. Pamela Nixon. Josephine O'Neill. Laura O'Toole. Peter Oakley. Amanda Oliver. Sue Orves. Stephen Peat. Ralph Percy. Kirsty Perry. <laughs> Nelza Peters. <laughs> Harry Pringer. <laughs> Emma Reeve. Judith Reeves. Sarah Richardson. Martin Roberts. Cheryl Robertshaw. Philip Robinson. <laughs> Deborah Romero Clennell. <laughs> Zoe Roscoe. <laughs> Danielle Routledge. Melanie Rudge. <laughs> Stephen Rushton. <laughs> Kate Russell. <laughs> Janet Safe. Samira Zakir. (Applause) 
Hannah Shrigley. Danielle Simons. Rebecca Simpson. Andrew Spruce. Nina Steersdorfer. Sharon Sterling. Claire Stubbs. Jennifer Studholm. Joseph Sullivan. Zonia Sykes. <laughs> Diane Sylvester Lowe. <laughs> Alia Tabassum. <laughs> Harjinda Tagar. Paul Tancred. <laughs> Alison Taylor. <laughs> Kieran Thompson. <laughs> Gemma Thornton. Gemma Treasure. <laughs> Nick Vrahimis. <laughs> David Walklet. <laughs> Elizabeth Walklet. Lee Walton. <laughs> Bart Wagos. Sarah Warwick. Megan Webster. <laughs> Anne Weir. <laughs> Roxanne White. <laughs> Amy Wilson Bowden. <laughs> Lynn Wilshire. Margaret Wilson. <laughs> Hannah Yearwood. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I present Sandy Gardner. Arthur Goodwin. <laughs> Richard Hayes. <laughs> Jeanette Kesterton.
Christine Stringer. Caroline Wells. Christine Williams. Adele Wilson. <laughs> Karina Wilson. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, I present Richard Howe. Michael Jones. For the degree of Bachelor of Laws with First Class Honours, I present Natasha Barker. Charlotte Miltiardo. And for the degree of Bachelor of Laws with Honours, I present Stephanie Boyden. Michael Phillips. Stephanie Spruce. <laughs> Tim Walker <laughs> Jennifer Wharton Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests, Kimberly Motley is one of the world's most respected lawyers working in one of the world's most complex legal systems. Her fight for victims of crime and injustice in Afghanistan has drawn international attention to the importance of upholding the rule of law even in the most difficult of circumstances. Kimberly was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and gained a degree in criminal justice and political science from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, before earning her legal qualifications at Marquette University, also in Milwaukee. She practiced as a public defender in the city for five years, working on both criminal and civil cases. In 2008, she traveled to Afghanistan as part of a program funded by the US State Department to train Afghan defense attorneys and providers of legal aid. Kimberly was shocked by the lack of legal representation available for foreign nationals and decided to remain in Afghanistan. As head of Motley Legal Services, she was the first foreigner to take cases to Afghanistan's criminal court and her practice takes in commercial, civil, contract, and employment law, as well as criminal cases. She's a leading international expert on juvenile justice. Her research and publications in this area have been widely disseminated. Kimberly is, however, perhaps best known for her work on human rights cases, especially women's rights. Her driving concern has been to ensure that the law is applied fairly and justly. 
she has found that punitive measures are being too frequently and harshly applied, while laws meant to safeguard individuals from harm are not being implemented or upheld effectively. Kimberley has set out to redress this balance. She believes in the concept of justness, that is ensuring that laws are used in the way they are intended to be used, to protect people from harm. Kimberley's quest for justness has led her to take on some exceptionally difficult cases. Perhaps most famously, she defended a woman who had been raped and made pregnant by her uncle. This woman was sentenced to 12 years in prison on the grounds of adultery, but told she would be freed if she married her rapist. Kimberley successfully had the sentence reduced, then overturned by presidential pardon in an unprecedented acknowledgement of women's rights. She continues to prioritize the rights of women and children in harrowing cases of rape, kidnap, and domestic violence, largely on a pro bono basis. Kimberley's work has attracted significant attention from the world's media, having been covered in the UK by the BBC and The Times, and in the US by CNN, The Wall Street Journal, Vanity Fair, and The Washington Post. Her story has been made into a prize-winning documentary film, Motley's Law, and she has been called one of the most inspirational people in the world by Richard Branson. At the same time, however, she has faced significant resistance and hostility and has been subjected to very real threats. Her public profile, consultancy, and advice to governments around the world has helped draw attention to her broader quest to find ways to uphold the rule of law. As she points out, a lack of justness is not limited to Afghanistan. It's a global issue that affects us all. Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Kimberly Motley. Good afternoon. It's so amazing to be here seeing everyone look so pretty and polished. Well, I want to express my gratitude and honor um, for getting this wonderful gift from Open University and also to give my congratulations to the class of 2017. As I was preparing my remarks today, I was thinking about how excited and relieved that you all must feel. And I was thinking about what are some words that I can impart on you um, to leave a lasting impression. And so if there's one tip of advice I'd like to give to you today is I'd like to encourage you to live a borderless life. To put that in today's language, hashtag borderless life, tag me on that. <laughs> now let me tell you about my borderless life. In 2008, I went to Afghanistan to train Afghan lawyers while also capacity building within the legal system. Within this first year, I talked to hundreds of men, women, and children throughout the countries that were denied their basic due process rights. I also found that there are many foreigners that were locked up throughout Afghanistan. Foreigners from the US, from the UK, Australia, from the continent of Africa. I heard stories about how systematic extortion ran rapid through the country. 
and I quickly discovered that within this legal system that I found myself immersed in, that laws were treated as inconvenient cliff notes as opposed to being a system of rules that govern a nation. Eventually, I found myself at Policharki Prison, affectionately nicknamed the Prison of Death. Since the 1970s, this prison was originally built by the Russians. It's been grave to thousands of politicians, thousands of terrorist factions, and a few internationals. It's a place that at that time had no electricity, little running water, and is home to a host of communicable diseases. But despite all its negative, it was a place where I, as a lawyer, was drawn to. On my first random visit to this prison, I met my first two foreign clients, Anthony Malone and Bevan Campbell. Both men were ex-military officers, Anthony from the UK, Bevan from South Africa, who had been tucked away and forgotten in the prison for years. After stealing myself away from the tour group, I talked with Bevan and Anthony in a very rushed three-minute conversation. In the off chance that someone that spoke English would come and listen to the men, they had prepared letters explaining who they were and why they thought that they were locked up. They immediately, insistently, started shoving these papers to me through the bar doors. As the prison tour group was slowly creeping away from me, I did not want that responsibility, and I told them that I did not want to take their letters. Bevan, with tears in his eyes, looked at me and said, please help us, no one is helping us. And I couldn't walk away from that. So I quickly snatched the letters, and later that night I read them. In those letters, they told me how they were paraded in a court with no legal representation, no witnesses, and no evidence. They told me how they were not allowed to speak in the court, how they weren't able to present a defense, and how they didn't even know what was being said in court because they weren't provided a translator. They told me how lonely and scary life was like as a foreigner living locked away in an Afghan prison. Both men had been beaten both literally and figuratively within the purported rule of law, and even the British government did not know what to do. Partially based on these interactions, I decided to live beyond my borders. And in 2009, I became the first foreigner to represent anyone in Afghanistan's courts. It was an undeniable leaf of faith, and a result, as a result of this interaction with Anthony and Bevan, I now represent people all around the world. Many well-intentioned and not so well-intentioned people from various countries advised that I stand down, and they didn't think that I should fight for a legal system or for clients that they didn't think were worth it. I learned and I still learn that rule of law is much bigger than the people that it governs, and I believe in it. I represented both Anthony and Bevan. They were both freed based upon that representation. This was no small feat, but it was a tribute to being a lawyer and more importantly, a tribute to living a borderless life. Every experience that I have had has enriched me both personally and professionally. It has also challenged any notions of normality while allowing me true freedom. Someone once said that the race is long, but in the end, it's only with yourselves. People will always try to confine you, but it's up to you to choose to live beyond those borders. Challenge your comfort zone. Challenge yourselves. Love yourselves. Aspire to live a borderless life and use this opportunity to make a better world for those who can and cannot ask for help. Thank you for this great honor and congratulations, Class 2017.
Chancellor. Continuing the presentation of graduates, I shall now present those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees, and Diplomas of Higher Education, and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony program. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Science with First Class Honours, Sharon Baker. <laughs> Emma Barlow. <laughs> Lorna Bickley. <laughs> Jessica Centro. Barry Cooper. <laughs> Carol Camino. <laughs> Sarah Davis. <laughs> Elaine DeVos. Joanne Draycott. <laughs> Maria Duggan Franklin. <laughs> Richard Garrod. <laughs> Lisa Gentle. Sarah Griffiths. <laughs> Callie Hawkins. <laughs> Jennifer Hayes. <laughs> Jane Holland. Sam Hubbard. <laughs> Rahana Kauza. <laughs> Kim Langford. <laughs> Catherine Merry. <laughs> Rebecca Morris. Michael Partridge. <laughs> Laura Petz. <laughs> Jerry Pringle. <laughs> Claire Reeve. Andrew Sherwood. Jason Smith. John Smith. Helen Steed. Madeline Tyson Green. For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours, I present Amanda Aarons. <laughs> Noreen Aktar. <laughs> Kate Allen. Matthew Andrews. Amanda Arnold. Paula Arts.
Daniel Ash. Carol Barker. Helen Badze. <laughs> Neelam Kaur Basra. <laughs> Louise Betley. <laughs> Vicky Blakesley. Pat Bradford. <laughs> Rebecca Brady. <laughs> Hayley Brand. <laughs> Amy Briggs. Jacqueline Ball. <laughs> Paul Clark. <laughs> Sarah Cochran. <laughs> Jennifer Cook. Becky Crafts. Yeah. Karen Gershom. Yeah. Jane Davey. Yeah. Renee Douglas. Kate Edwards. Richard Edwards. Sarah Emmons. Joanne Fawcett. William Feltham. <laughs> Zoe Foster. Kimberly French. <laughs> Heidi Geisler. Christopher Gelder. Gemma Goddard. Leslie Gray. Natasha Green. Vanessa Green. <laughs> Richard Harris. <laughs> Kate Harvey. <laughs> Neil Hatton. Kim Helm. Donna Hodge. Alan Jones.
Catherine Jones. Wendy Jones. Pooja Joshi. Najma Khan. Susan Kitchen. Maria Napa. Helena Leclasio. Michelle Lloyd. Simon Lungley. Michaela McGuinness. Josephine Mujiji. Brooke Morgan. Megan Morris. Kin and Mile. Kate Nursey. Catherine O'Donoghue. Evangulia Palios Aden. Emma Pickering. Anna Perry. James Powley. Katie Reed. Paulette Riaz. Katie Richards. Amy Richardson. Rebecca Roberts. Samara Satar. Peter Saunders. Sandra Sherratt. Veronica Simpson. Angela Smythe. Catherine Spencer. Stephen Sprules Wright. Rebecca Squire. Tiffany Stinson. Angela Stones. Katie Stora Young.
Claire Sullivan. <laughs> Shelley Sully. <laughs> Chrissy Thomas. <laughs> Victoria Tunley. Julie Vaughan. Liz Vickerstaff. Zena von Rollock. Adam Walker. David Whitehead. <laughs> Victoria Williams. <laughs> Kate Wilson. <laughs> Laura Woodward. For the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present Angela Braid. Christopher Canning. Phil Dolphin. Sabrina Faulkner. Julian Hines. <laughs> David Oliver. <laughs> Leanne Robertson. For a foundation degree, I present Uzma B. <laughs> Jane Day. <laughs> Siobhan Elliott. Philippa Green. <laughs> Anne Marie Hadland. <laughs> Sophie Hardwick. <laughs> Zara Hinchcliffe. Angela Jones. <laughs> Kerry Morgan. <laughs> Susan Musket. <laughs> Stephen Price. Adrian Tisdall. <laughs> Michelle Carla Wright. <laughs> and for the Diploma of Higher Education, I present Samantha Deeprose.
Kim Hopkins. Glyn Johns. And William Rumble. Well, wow, that was brilliant. Thank you all for making it such a fantastic afternoon. And I really thank you. That's better. <laughs> I always well up a bit because I wish that I could share all of the stories that I hear as people dash across the stage. Some people just want to get off as quick as possible. Some people look like they can't really believe they're here. But so many of you said to me either, I've got five children or I've just had a child or it's taken me 10 years to do this. Or one woman told me that it had been studying since 19, 19, no, 1988. So that is pretty impressive. And there's a 16 year old graduate. Yes, exactly. And we, we also have a 16-year-old graduate as well, which I think you'll agree is extremely impressive. So, And what about our amazing two honorary graduates? I really feel so inspired and humbled to be on the stage with them. What extraordinary and strong women who I'm sure you will all leave today. Please listen to what they told you because it, well, you're lucky to have heard it come from them. That's what I would say. So you are now entering the incredible network of people that have graduated from the Open University. Hundreds of thousands of people have done what you have done and you're part of a huge family and we hope that you will continue to take on into your lives some of the things that you've learnt while you've been studying with the university. But I think that everyone in the university and I'm sure everyone in the hall would appreciate the incredible support that the graduates in the room have had. I know because many of you tell me as you come across the stage and from talking to you that unlike many uh, other people in university education, many of you are running families, you may have a job, you have hugely complex situations to deal with and that's only possible because of the incredible people that support you and help you learn. So I personally would like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> louder, louder. Sometimes we uh, laugh in the university because you are described as part-time learners. Well, screw that. There's nothing part-time about being an OU learner because you're doing so many things at once. So let's ditch that. I think you're double-time learners, not part-time learners. But that is possible with the people that help you and the networks that you have. So thank you to all of the people supporting, as you said. I'm sure you know lots about the university, but some of the extraordinary things that we do beyond just teaching you your courses never fail to amaze me. You know, we've got massive investment in space research and we've done so many incredible things uh, looking up in far, far into the sky and also deep down into the ocean and we've got partnerships with the BBC to do incredible environmental and natural world stuff. And all of these things you also can be very proud of as graduates from this incredible place. But I want to just come back to the Open University motto, which I think you can see above uh, the stage here, to live and learn, learn and live. And I think that's one of the most important things. I feel so lucky in my own career and life to have had the opportunity to be continually curious and to learn on an 
amazing scale across so many different things. And if you take one thing from the Open University, think about that, continue to live and to learn, because by doing that, I think you've heard from all the people on the stage today that you will find life does become borderless, that you will find life can become very surprisingly um, successful and campaigning, as Julie showed us too. So living and learning is such an important ethos and so core to the way the Open University runs its philosophy and its life. So take that with you. You've shown already that you can achieve amazing things, but we know this is just the first step and that you will go on to do even more extraordinary things. And I want to see some more of you on the stage, some, see some familiar faces when you come back to do your master's or your PhD, or maybe even become one of the academics at the university, who knows. So don't think that there are any boundaries on what you can achieve because you've just done one of the hardest things imaginable, completed an open university course, and you should be so proud of yourselves for doing that. So hold that in you, continue to live and learn well, take all of the things that you've learned and heard today, and most of all, enjoy what incredible celebrations I'm sure you have planned for the rest of the evening. So one more huge round of applause. We've got to break the roof with it. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Can those of you who can stand please stand and I will now draw the ceremony to a close.